Good morning and welcome on back to the channel. I'm about to get that first sip of coffee. Oh, it's so good. Uh, we're gonna hop in the Silver Bullet and we're just gonna go out to the lake. I'm gonna have my phone on me be on call because baby is coming any moment. But as of right now, we are scheduled to go in uh, less than 48 hours. I'm just gonna talk to you. Uh, hang out a little bit and just be with you guys before uh, there's this new baby here and I'm just holding it in my arms and and um, you know enjoy being a dad for the second time around so let's go out on the water together go do some hunting do some bug hunting before we get started I gotta give a giant shout out to my longest sponsor here on this channel, and that is Mystery Tackle Box. MTV reached out to me a long time ago, guys, and they wanted to help me in the in the fishing world and sponsor me, sponsor my videos, and I just want to thank them so much. Uh, Mystery Tackle Boxes remain one of the best ways for you to get new lures sent to your doorstep and save you money. So if you're not quite sure what the newest thing is, you don't wanna spend a ton of money experimenting, they'll send it to your doorstep. You can go explore on their website, mysterytacklebox.com. I will link it down below and you guys can check out all of their, their newest products, their bundles, all of that type stuff. And if you wanna use my code to get a discount, that's, uh, that's linked down below as well. You can use my code at checkout or just use the link in the description. Thank you MTV for sponsoring these videos all of these years, allowing me to do what I do. Um, as a side note, you know, Catchco, their parent company, uh, love working with them as well. You know, that's who we, we work with to make all of our hard baits and our rods, and they just do a really good job. Love those guys, love their products. So anyway, uh, they're linked down below, and uh, now it's time to go bass fishing. We're going to do some bassing and also probably snatch some crappies. I've got I've got some stuff I, I'm experimenting with for crappie as well. It's coming down the pipe. Maybe a little early that I can say that, but coming down the pipe. Just had my first bite. After throwing them on a worm, switched to a rattling net, which is about oh, 10 inches shorter. GoPro just died. Switch the battery out. So I'm gonna fish, uh, fish this little little drop off here a little bit more. Let's see if we can fit again. There's one little guy pecking at it. Oop! I just picked it up right there. Right on the drop. Come on, little buddy. Well, it's bad when they're dropping a ned. A lot of times though, if you're fishing around some sort of brush or cover with, uh, with a plastic worm and, you, and you're getting these little nips and then nothing's there, I mean, it or it feels like a thump and you go to set the hook and nothing's there, it's, a, it's, a, it's actually a crappie. Good rock right there. That's where we should get bit. I'm gonna switch my color on a crank to something flagrant. Crank around a little bit. Whip it. Whip it good. That's a big boy. Come on now. Big cast on that point. Oh, there's one. 
Oh, dead gun. It's a crappie. One of those crappies twerking on my tail. Well, bam. Sorry, buddy. I have tried and tried. It was like two bass that were swimming around this deal. Tried to get them to fire on my, my bass lures. I just didn't want to do it. Cracking them. Get them right in that schnooter too. God, they're slurping this thing. They are slurping it deep. May look familiar to some of you. May look a little familiar. Little boy. Noticing when I catch those crappie, the bass, these little outer globs right here, get a little excited. I was thinking maybe I just need to, oh, we got another one on. Need to put on like a swim bait or something. Contender, tied on. See if I can get one of these blobs to react to this thing. Just gonna get it sink down there. Shouldn't have any problem getting it on the scope. Something falling it. That might have just been a big curious crappie. Hmm. Look at that. Hmm. Interesting little lure there. Wonder who gave me those. Mmm. Boy, something just came over there and just gave it the old smack smack. Happens to be one of the largest crappie in that pile. Could not stand that swimming action over the top of it. Fun times. Come on, big Bertha. Oh, God. Oh, oh boy. Bertha done tapped it. That was a bass strike. Spit it, spit it quick. I can see a thick blob right in the middle of this pile. If you guys look closely at that pile, there's a bass just right in the thick of it, right in the midst of everything. I'm trying to work this Mondo worm through there and get him to bite. I don't know if that's what hit me the first time. It could have been a crappie. That, that fish is just buried in that pile. Getting crappies. Oh. Loose mouth. Mm, mm. Big boy. Big boy. Oh, that's the biggest of the day right there now. Just smacking it. Can't believe I'm letting him go. <laughs> what does that look like? Hmm. Very interesting. Tell y'all, I am going to make another move here. Just having fun, giving her a dangle really like to get me a bass out of one of these piles though. Watts. Absolute watts. I don't know how I'm supposed to not go catch the fish when I see them like that. The idea is to have fun and get a tug. I 
I'm gonna have some fun and get a tug. Micro swim baits over the piles. Little tasty units. Can you imagine five of these on an A rig? What that would look like? Whew, they are coming way off the pile. Look at this thing. Way off. The biggest ones in the pile will come get that swim bait first off. The other ones you gotta you gotta dabble with. Smasher. Oh, that's a big one. That's a big juicy eater there. Hook just fell right out. Another one right there, my goodness. There's about 30 or 40 more. I'm gonna move on. So at this point in the day, y'all, you know, it's probably about noon. Yeah, 11.58. You know, if you, if you were shallow fishing in the morning, that would most likely be done. When you got bright skies, the fish are just gonna, they're gonna do three things. They're gonna go deep, that's to find cooler water. They're gonna go to the shade, uh, cause that'll be cooler and the sun won't be in their eyes. Or uh, they're gonna find some sort of current. So those, th those are the three things you need to look for in the summer. And right now I'm looking for uh, deep and cover, basically br brush, rocks. I'm on these uh, deeper rock stuff right now. And I've got my big worm, my big summer meal. Big worm like this, this is the Mondo, is good really starting in May when they get post-spawn all the way through the fall. I like it through November. You know, you could fish the fish a big old straight tail worm as well. Something about worms in jelly colors. So I like red bug, I like June bug, I like plum. Just saw a little crappie come up right there. All those jelly and jam type colors. Don't know what it is, but they seem to really like it. Blue fleck. Stick with those purples and reds. Really seems to do, do well. Chesty's dead. We're gonna take that off. Oh, it feels good to not have a bra on. You thinking about it, I have spent probably a good decade of my life with a Chesty on. Had a GoPro ever since the Hero One when I started this channel. Crank, jig, worm, jerk bait. Goodness gracious. I just, there's just not a spot I can't catch them at. bass caught on uh, this prototype. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh, man. <laughs> oh, it's so fun, y'all. So fun. I swear, when you're summertime crappie fishing, it's just, it just happens. It's one of the reasons I love it. You just get around both things. 
more stoked than what, what I'm catching it on right now. On a noodle. A noodle rod. It's unreal. Sometimes you throw up throw the kitchen sink at them. You know, big worms, big cranks, big jigs. Whip out a crappie jig and a little little minnow style bait. And they'll eat it. Come here, darling. Oh gosh. You're just so you're just so big and nice. I love you. Oh my gosh, y'all, look at that. That is something cool right there. There's that little bait that just fell out. So cool. You know, that's like a four pounder right there. Really nice fish. I'm actually gonna throw it in the box real quick for a pick. There's that little bitty bait. Fat bellied fish, ready to go. I put them in the live well, recovered. And now we're gonna put them back in the water and release them. on down get going get back down there there you go you might have noticed right there that a fish was slow to swim off and that's because you know it was a long fight on the spinning rig got it in but I put it in the live well immediately I let it sit in there on the recirc uh, for you know a couple minutes then when the fish look recovered you know it was stabilized on the bottom it wasn't flipping over or anything got it out took a quick photo I actually didn't take a photo I just rolled on the camera and then let it go and then you know, one of the things that I don't do anymore I'm guilty of and I'm sure some of us are guilty of is uh, we'll ride around in the boat uh, all day on a hot summer day like this you know catching them deep and then we'll get a nice sack of fish and we'll take a big photo and it looks great looks great on uh, on Instagram and all that stuff but uh, some of those fish will end up not doing well you know just rubbing against other fish in a, in a packed spot with with unless you're putting ice on them and taking extremely good care of them uh, some of them just end up dying so as i get older i just realize fish care is super important so just uh make sure that fish is going to recover also catching it out of 20 feet of water that fish needs to swim back down its swim bladder is adjusted uh, for deeper conditions when you catch them in shallow water in the summer it doesn't matter as much but um, sometimes if you just let them go right away after a long fight, they, they won't do so well. So um, I just like to make sure the live well is full, put on the aerator, let them recover, and give them a couple minutes, and then release them back in the water. So don't take, take too long on your photos for the grams. And I'm just so excited about the baits that I'm holding in my hands right now. Uh, I've been working since the spring. Panfish stuff, y'all. Panfish stuff, specifically crappie something I'm passionate about. I know everyone's really getting into it and uh, we're trying to design some really good crappie baits that are uh, just as good as bass lures that you would throw. So same, same type quality. And what do you know? They catch bass too. Might as well keep the crappie jig in my hand. I might catch an eight pounder. It is a toasty roasty out here. I think I just found a few more bass on some rock. So I'm gonna throw that worm out there, man. Try to get that, that one last big one. Save these crappie for another day. I don't have time right now to go back to the house, clean them, do a fish fry, because we were in like the final hours of a uh, of baby coming. Got honeydews, got things to do for little baby Ben gets here. Just hoping that all goes well. This is my last dangle before uh, before he gets here so just enjoying it man can't wait to come out here with him and amy too and in fact we did some of these new baits testing them out on some other panfish bluegill last night check this out wow wow amy you're doing so good I got one. <laughs> okay you want me to unhook it reeling them in i see that smile amy rackley catching them <laughs> on some prototype Guggen baits. I see that smile. 
Love to see it. You are smiling. You almost got him in. There he is. Good job. Okay, now we gotta take him off the hook. Is that new? Yeah. Is that face new? Yeah. What color is that? Pink. That's right. You wanna let him go or do you want daddy to? Me. Say bye bye. Bye bye. Good job. <laughs> Catch and release. So she can always say she was the first person to catch fish on those little teeny micros of the uh, little saucies. We're, we're trying to narrow down sizes and things like that, but those little tiny ones for, for bluegill are just perfect. Anyway, I'm gonna grab not something tiny, something big. And fling it on out here. These fish are sitting in 15-ish on a drop. Where there's just crappie all over this offshore stuff. <sighs> Y'all are gonna make me do it, aren't you? You're gonna make me get out my crappie jig. Got it. Big boy, come on now. Yay, baby. Got him on that swimmer. Got him. Chasing it out of the pile. Woo, big boy. Oh, black crappie with the racing stripe. It's a good one to end on right there, y'all. Don't know if y'all can see this, but there's a little racing stripe down his back. It's pretty cool. It's over. My last dangle before baby is here. And if y'all, mothers and fathers out there, you know how it is. It's gonna be a lot of babies crying, taking care of mama, all that fun stuff. But I actually had a really good dangle today and enjoyed it. Ended up catching a, uh, a big fish, a monstrous fish for the setup I was using, uh, but really fun. I just wanted to quickly show you guys some stuff that we've been working on. We actually brought on an engineer this year that is a really smart young guy, great at uh, CAD designs, and uh, he likes to work on swim baits and things. So he has, uh, he already has a knowledge of what is going to work in the water, uh, a pretty good working knowledge of what's gonna work in the water. So um, we already had some, some molds, uh, some, they weren't quite the soft plastic, and I'd already looked at some things, but this was actually, these last two days was my first time actually getting to fish these baits that are in uh, the high quality plastic. The one I was catching the most fish on was really just a modified dart. So it was made uh, reducing the hooks, hook slot, reducing the size. I've actually got three different sizes in here. These don't have official names yet, uh, but that'll have something to do with, with the dart, I'm sure. And it, it thickened up the body, made it squattier to, to really conform to that jig head style of fishing. And these aren't just shrunken down. It's not like you just put it in the program, shrink it down. You have to uh, modify the bait in width, length, uh, thinness in certain areas. But the amazing thing about the swim baits, even the really tiny ones, that I noticed when I was uh, bluegill fishing with Emmy, that tail actually kicks. The other one that I got bites on, but I wasn't able to uh, to get them to fully inhale was uh, basically a modified uh, grub with a with a mondo worm style tail. It'd be a great little trailer on some things. Look how tiny that is, y'all. And the other thing is that I was I was worried about was if the crappie were gonna like nip the tails off because you know you can have things that are too skinny and plastic that are uh, the fish will rip off um, I caught 20 it was probably around 20 fish on uh, on one single plastic on the jig head between uh, going out last last night last evening and then today uh, the bass that I caught actually tore it up and um, the bluegill 
you know they after catching like five or six of them uh, they ripped the tail off the tiniest of the saucies so the tiniest thinnest plastic they did but um, I, I like the soft consistency I feel like it just it gets bites I even think some of this stuff could be used in northern applications where you've got like a lot of small minnows little glass minnows things of that nature but man I'm just excited to fish this stuff y'all um, I'm impressed with it already and uh, we're gonna be catching them for the grease here shortly so I'm gonna take all this info that I got on it now and take it to the office and uh, and then we'll go from there and, and keep building and guys I may be out of commish for a little while on on the vids I'm gonna do some short-form content on uh, Instagram and TikTok, but um, I'm excited to bring baby Ben into the world. I'm going to spend some good quality time with him. Um, probably not going to do too much fishing uh, while he's here and just, just enjoy his presence. So uh, thank you guys again for, for, uh, for praying for us and um, just being here on this channel for so many years. Two kids later. Can't believe it. Have a good time. Have a good dangle. May God bless you in your outdoor adventures. And I will see you on the next one. That's a big one. I'm a slow cast. Okay, throw them back. Good job. Good job. Oh, 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 careful. Oh, sorry. You're okay. Okay. Good job. Now time for bed. <laughs> Give it a dangle right before bedtime. Oh, man, are you going to have fishy dreams? Oh, you dream about catching fish.